Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys and I'm glad to be with you again and share a word with you from my study here in my home. And I, I've entitled this short message to you today on, on the subject that we're to show our faith. We're to show our faith to others. If we're Christians, we ought to allow others to see that we're Christians. And we ought to show our faith by the way we live. <clears throat> I'm reading from the book of Luke, the fifth chapter. And then in verse uh, 17, it, and Jesus came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. There were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by. And uh, the power of the Lord was upon Jesus to heal the sick. And uh, behold, two men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with palsy and was paralyzed. And they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before Jesus. But when they could not get in because of the crowd, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the ceiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto them, Your sins are forgiven you. And so here is a picture of Jesus sitting in a house talking and uh, his fame had spread throughout the land and there were people all in the house crowded in and there were people all around outside trying to hear and trying to look in the windows and to see and to hear the words that he came to, that he came to speak. And uh, here came four men, who, each one of them carrying at the end of the couch, a, a man that was paralyzed and could not walk. But they loved this man and they, and they believed that Jesus could heal him. They had heard about him giving sight to the blind and healing the leper and they, and they brought him to the house but they couldn't get in because of the crowd. So they went around and walked up the stairways to the roof and tore a piece of the tiling off the roof and big enough to let him down and, and they let him down with ropes. Everybody stopped and started looking up and Jesus stopped talking and looked up and here they were letting this man down from the ceiling and they laid him down at the feet of Jesus. And I never said a word. They just laid him down there through the rope. Said he, he was laying there looking at Jesus. And Jesus, the Bible says, when he saw their faith, now he not only did the four men believe, but the man himself believed. He was willing for them to let him down there because he believed that Jesus could heal. And so when Jesus saw their faith, you see, he sees our faith. Jesus knows what we believe. And if we don't believe, he knows that. And if he believes, if we believe in him, he knows that. He knows everything about us. And we need to recognize that he knows our thoughts, he knows our heart. And he knows whether we believe in him or not. So believe in him, dear friend. And not only will you know it and others, but mainly Jesus will know it. He saw their faith. He realized they believed. And he knew they believed in him. I want you to believe in Jesus. The Bible says, He that believeth is not condemned. But he that believeth not in Jesus is already condemned. Condemned to death in hell. But oh, by the grace of God, he that believeth on the Son of God is not condemned. He is saved forever. And so believe on the Lord Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Believe that God loves you. Believe that the Lord loved you so much He gave His Son to die, to pay for your sins. Believe that He loved you so much He went to that cross and there died for you and in your place. He took all your sins and nailed them to His cross. And by His stripes we are saved forever and by His stripes we are healed. And so the man looked up to Jesus and Jesus looked at him and He said, Your sins are forgiven you. Hallelujah. Your sins are forgiven. He knew the man believed in him. And he said, your sins are forgiven. The greatest thing that God can say to you, dear friend, is your sins are forgiven, all of them. All of them forgiven. All of them, all that you've ever committed or ever will commit. All your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. You'll not face him in the judgment. Because Jesus paid it all on the cross. He paid for all your sins. Be forgiven. Be forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. 
Now when he said that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were standing there and they could not uh, understand that in, at all. And uh, they said, uh, the Pharisees said, Who is this that speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? Well, they were right. Nobody but God can forgive sin. But Jesus was God in the flesh. He was God. Incarnated means God in the flesh. And God had come down to walk the streets of Jerusalem and the shores of Lake Galilee in the form of the Son of God. Yes, it was God who was able to forgive. And uh, Jesus knew what they were thinking. You see, he knows our thoughts. And he said to them, Whether well, which is easier to say, your sins be forgiven you, or to say unto this man who cannot walk, and has not walked for many years, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. Now, either way, it would be impossible. Which is easier, to say your sins be forgiven and forgive them, or to say, take up your bed and walk? Either one would be an impossibility to man. But Jesus said this, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up your bed, and go into your own house. And immediately he rose before them, took up the uh, a bed on which he lay and departed into his own house glorifying God. So Jesus looked at the man and said, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And when he walked out that door, he was glorifying God. And the people that heard it and said it knew that his sins had been forgiven. Because he who was able to say to the paralyzed man, Get up and walk, had the power of God himself to say your sins are forgiven. I want you to know, my dear friends, Jesus has the power to forgive your sins. All of them. All of them. All of them. I want you to know it. Hallelujah, he's forgiven me. And I'm clean. I'm washed in the blood. I'm grateful for that. I'm praising God for that. And he'll forgive your sins. And that he'll heal your body. Jesus can heal as well as forgive. And if you're sick and you need healing, pray to the Lord in the name of Jesus, and He will heal your body in the will of God. Pray in the name of Jesus and claim the healing that's yours. When He died upon the cross and His blood was shed for sinners, He died to save us from sin and also a bonus, and that is that His blood, His stripes, heal us, and we are healed of our sickness and disease in the will of God. And so pray for that. Pray for healing. May God heal you that are sick tonight. Wherever you are this hour, this day, may God bless you and help you to know that He is healing you right now when you believe. Healing you right now with your eyes. Healing you right now with your stomach. Healing you right now with your back. Healing you right now. Yay, from cancer. Healing in the name of Jesus. Whatever. Oh, praise God. Jesus is able to heal. He's able to forgive. And way, when we, way back when, when, when we see in our lives how many times we missed it, thank God, Jesus paid it all and we're healed. Not only healed, but we're forgiven. And to be forgiven is more important than being healed. The body that's healed will soon go back to the dust from which it came. But the soul that is saved and forgiven will live forever in the bright light of heaven. And it'll never die, but it'll be with God forever in the mansions of glory. Hallelujah. God forgives and forgets. Isn't that good? He forgives and forgets. The Bible says in Isaiah that I am the Lord thy God. I, re I, I forgive your sins and I'll remember them no more. Hallelujah. I'll remember them no more. Corey Chan Boom said, said uh, I took my sins to Jesus and he cast them into the sea. And then he put up a sign and it said, No fishing allowed. <laughs> put up a sign, no fishing. Don't go back and try to... Worry about your sins. They're gone. They're forgiven. They're drowned in the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. Forever. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. The Lord saves us once and for all. Once and for all. Free from the law. Oh, 
perfect salvation. Oh, praise God, He has revealed His redemption. Cursed by the fall and bruised by the law, Christ has redeemed us once for all. Once for all, oh, sinner, receive it. Oh, once for all, oh, brother, believe it. Oh, go to the cross, your burdens will fall. Christ has redeemed us once for all. Praise God, He's done it once for all. May He do it for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.